Hello, this is Lazarus at Telecom Tech, where telecom and networking technologies are simply explained. Today, we'll be simply explaining how BGP is typically employed in the MPLS core. Now, don't forget to subscribe to enable notifications and to like this video if you like this video. And if you have questions or feedback, please feel free to write them in the comments below. I'm always happy to read them and to respond. Now, in a typical MPLS topology like this one, we have the CE routers, the PE routers, and the P routers. CE stands for customer edge, and these routers are located at the edge of each customer network. The CE routers connect to the provider edge routers, or the PE routers, and those routers are found all along the perimeter, or the edge, of the MPLS network. Finally, we have the provider routers, or the P routers, which constitute the very core of the MPLS network. Now, to make all of this work in the way that we demonstrated in previous videos, we need to deploy various technologies. First, we need a routing protocol between the CE and the PE. This way, the CE can advertise the networks found on the customer network to the PE router here. We can use any routing protocol we choose including OSPF, EIGRP, or even BGP. Secondly, we need to establish an underlay routing protocol within the ISP infrastructure. This is so that all of the P and PE routers can find each other and communicate with each other. Remember, this routing protocol is not here to advertise customer networks. It's there to establish the control plane on the ISP infrastructure on top of which MPLS will be able to function. Typically for large scale ISP networks, it's either OSPF or ISIS that are used for this underlay routing protocol. Third, we need to deploy some protocol that will allow the PE routers to share their customer networks with each other so that they know what labels to push onto the packets as they send them through the MPLS core. And this is where BGP comes in. Now, for our purposes, we're going to assume that the whole of the ISP network is contained within a single BGP autonomous system, or AS. We'll use AS number 100 to define it. This AS contains all of the PE and P routers that belong to this MPLS topology. Now remember, we already have an IGP running, which allows all of the PE and P routers to reach each other. Since we're configuring BGP within a single AS, we're going to be creating IBGP peerings. Now where are we going to configure IBGP? Specifically, we'll need to create a set of full mesh IBGP peerings between all of the PE routers. However, the P routers will not be participating in BGP at all. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Isn't it a prerequisite to have a full mesh IBGP peering within an AS? How can we leave the P routers out of it? Well, yes, but that prerequisite is applied only to BGP routers. The P routers are not BGP routers. You're allowed to have a router within your topology that's not running BGP and that is not participating in any BGP peerings. It may even be relaying BGP messages between IBGP peers because of the underlying IGP, but it still won't be violating the IBGP full mesh peering rule. So only the PE routers participate in BGP by becoming IBGP peers with all other PE routers. In other words, only the outer edge of the MPLS network participates in IBGP, not the inner core of P routers. Now, the reason for this is that BGP in such a scenario is used to allow PE routers to share the customer networks with each other. So PE1 here will advertise to all other PE routers the IP addresses behind the CE1 router here. So PE2 here populates its BGP table with this network. But remember, PE routers are also running LDP and are becoming LDP neighbors with P routers. So this PE router learns which label it should push on a packet to get those packets to the proper destination. 
Now, the realization that BGP runs on the perimeter of the MPLS network will help us to further understand why MPLS and label switching is more efficient than IP routing. If we didn't use MPLS, all of these routers in the ISP infrastructure must learn about all of the routes that exist in all of the customer networks. That means that this P router here must have a routing table that includes all of the networks of all of these potentially hundreds of customer routers. But with our MPLS setup using BGP, the P routers are completely oblivious to all customer networks. Isn't that a huge load off? So when CE1 forwards a packet to PE1 that is destined for this customer network here, how does it get to PE2 and then to CE2? Well, from PE1 all through the MPLS core, only label switching takes place. Remember label switching? That efficient method of directing traffic, the P routers only use labels and nothing else. They don't care about the source and destination IPs in the packet. They simply use the labels that the PE routers push onto the packets as they're sent through the topology. Now in this video, we just talked about BGP and its ability to exchange the IP prefixes of the customer networks between the PE routers. However, BGP is able to provide much more for MPLS. In particular, it's ideal to allow the use of what are known as layer three VPNs within an MPLS topology. Until now, we've been allowing customers to communicate with each other over the MPLS infrastructure, but we haven't isolated those customers from each other. And as you can understand, that is definitely a prerequisite in order to put this into any production network. Layer 3 VPNs in MPLS allow this separation of customer networks on the MPLS topology, and it's BGP that makes that possible. We'll talk about that in a future video. Now, I'd like to mention that the title of this video is Using BGP in the MPLS Core. But strictly speaking, there is no BGP in the core P routers. It's only running along the perimeter between the PE routers. But it was difficult for me to find a title that was concise and descriptive enough to convey that meaning. So I just thought I'd stick with that title. In any case, that covers the use of BGP on the edge of the MPLS core network. I hope you found this video useful and if you have, please click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and please subscribe to get updates to newly published videos. I'm Lazarus at Telecom Tech. I hope this has been helpful for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.